Hi, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the Rectified Podcast. Today, my guest is William Gassner, co-founder of Stack Influence, and we're going to talk all about influencer marketing. William, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me on, Sandy. Let's go straight to the point. Is influencer marketing on its way to extinction? Great question. Um, I would highly disagree with that. Otherwise, I wouldn't be in this business. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. But there are spectrums to certain aspects, I believe, of influencer marketing dying and also growing. First off, as far as what is dying, and there's different capacities to this, but there is less trust of what I've seen and what the industry has been signaling in larger influencers and the industry calls yeah. influencers. Reason being is nowadays, we all know we're bombarded on social media. Influencers are everywhere. And we know a lot of people are getting paid huge amounts of money to promote products that they might not actually mm-hmm. care about or believe in. And so that consumers are now becoming less trustworthy in some of those types of promotions. Um, yeah. And where we see the industry moving and where we've positioned Stack Influence is more on the smaller creator side, the micro, the nano influencers, which are much more authentic and trustworthy. It's like we like to call it word of mouth marketing at scale. And I believe that will never die because you'll always yeah. trust a friend, a family, a close acquaintance when they recommend something mm-hmm. to you. And that's that's really where I see everything evolving to and where everyone is going to become a creator, right? Yeah. Um, As we all have influence over our peers. You're saying mega, micro, nano, all of these words. There are listeners who don't get what you're talking about. Can you just elaborate a little bit about these different levels of influencers and, you know, how many followers do they have? What do they do, et cetera? There's a variety of definitions, honestly, of what everything means. But Standard definition is mega influencers are individuals who have, on average, more than a million followers. So Mm -hmm. think of the celebrities of the world, um, people who have a large reach, right? And then there's macro influencers, which normally have 100,000 to a million. Okay. Micro normally have 10,000 to 100,000. And then nano, from our definition, is less than 10,000. Um, Mm -hmm. and again, different capacities to each one. You have advantages to the larger influencers, obviously is a much larger reach, right? You can access a lot of different people, but much more expensive and also less trustworthy. Whereas macro, micro, nano become incrementally cheaper. Our platform actually brands only have to compensate influencers with just their products. So no additional monetary compensation. In the platform, we do have monetary rewards for influencers that we pay out internally. Mm -hmm. Um, Brand only has to really give a product away. And that can add also to trustworthiness and authenticity because if you're getting paid to do something, you might not really care that much about the product. You want the money, (laughs) right? Yeah, yeah. Um, But if you're doing it for the product, then you actually desire this product. It's a much more authentic testimonial, right? Yeah. So... Other things just on that topic, social platforms have become, have been changing. Originally, when social platforms like Facebook just launched, if you had 10,000 followers or 100,000 followers and every single one of those people were online the day you made a post, everyone would see that post. Things evolved to now where when people post, only engaged audiences out of your follower base Mm -hmm. actually will see and receive that yeah. content. And now the, the most recent trend in terms of TikTok and Instagram Reels is content actually will go beyond your follower base. So follower base is now almost becoming somewhat of a vanity metric, whereas content is really what matters. So you could have 100 followers and mm-hmm. produce some really, really great content that could be seen by 5 million people, right? Whereas the larger influencer with 5 million followers may produce content that's only seen by 100 people, right? So industry is evolving quite rapidly and as well as all the social platforms. Yeah, the algorithms mainly. (laughs) Um, So William, tell me a little bit more about your platform. So you mainly work with nano influencer. Is that, am I like, am I right? Nano and micro. 
So, Nano and micro. Um, and you only give them a product. And if they like it, they can talk about it or they have to talk about it anyway. Like, how does it work? So if they if they don't like the product, they actually do not have to promote about it. We want to find people okay. who are actually have a really authentic and positive experience mm -hmm. with the brand. Yeah. And uh, if you're lucky enough, one of these nano influencers can have something that goes viral and your product is on it because absolutely. of what you just said with the new algorithms and what's happening on TikTok and Reels, right? Yep. A hundred percent. And our platform actually isn't, so majority of our community is nano and micro influencers, but there mm -hmm. are macro and even some mega influencers on the platform or in few between because at those stages of growth, most of them are making a lot of money. But if you get the right product in their hands and it's the right brand, yeah. uh, many of these people are still willing to do a promotion just for the product because it adds to their reputation. They can kind of build their influencer resume if it's a big brand. They can now leverage that to get other collaboration opportunities. So quite a wide range of different people who participate in the platform, but majority are on that lower side. Yeah. Today, more and more, I'm seeing, especially on TikTok, there's a lot of creators who talk about, you know, how much they should, how much they should get paid and that they shouldn't do things for free product. You know, there's all of this talk on TikTok. I don't know if it's on Instagram too, but I see it more on TikTok. How are you how are you managing to like convince these creators of accepting just products? You know, I know you have a big database of, you know, creators like working with like very big brands that you're working with and they're accepting to work for these products, but are they being influenced by these other creators who are saying you need to get money for this? Absolutely. I am definitely a proponent of people getting paid for their uh, yeah. work, right? <laughs> yeah. So, however, where our platform is positioned on the influencer side is, we like to kind of say the gateway to the influencer world, right? You're just, mm -hmm. you're just starting out, or if you are an established creator, it's a way, kind of what I, mentioned previously to get more collaboration opportunities um, and kind of build that resume and that experience, right? If you can mm -hmm. show, hey, I work with this big brand and I was able to promote this very authentically to my audience, um, it can really leverage to much more collaborations. The other thing is um, what we believe is that people should be getting some sort of compensation for social promotions right mm, every yeah. day when you post on social media you are in some essence promoting a brand right it's what yeah. you're wearing maybe you're passionate about rock climbing and you're wearing some rock climbing shoes right um, yeah, yeah. you're kind of passionate about a different many different things and so um one ethos that we believe in is that we like to and we have a kind of saying turn your creativity into currency right is like mm -hmm. um do promotions for products that you actually love, that you're passionate about, that you actually consume on a daily basis, right? And yeah. you might not get paid a huge amount of money, but at least you won't have to pay for that product. Um, and mm -hmm. so that's kind of where we are positioned and we're not the fit for every single creator. And But where yeah. we see our platform evolving is to cater to different levels. The last thing I'll say is on the content side. So our, our platform is very open-ended. So we give a lot of creative control to the creators and influencers. Mm. Um, we believe that's the rightful way because if you're asking the world of someone, I want a three minute video and I want it to be an unboxing video with you explaining X, Y, Z things about the product, right? Like that takes yeah. longer time to create. And so yeah. we want to have more open endedness to where the creator has more control. Mm -hmm. um, and there's balances there of brand desires, et cetera. So where we see the platform evolving and where the industry, I think, is going to evolve is depending on what tier, what platform you promote on, what type of content you create, whether that's imagery, whether that's video, um, the form of that imagery or video, it could be a before and after photo. It could be a full testimonial video. video. Uh, yeah. Depending on what that is and how much effort goes in, people should be paid incrementally based off that, as well as what their total reach is. There's some platforms that mm -hmm. reward people more money if their post goes viral versus um, if they only got 
very small engagement on a promotion, you know? Yeah. And also, it's not just about a post going viral. Like there are people who have reels or TikToks that reach millions of people, but nobody acts upon <laughs> it. So if I'm a brand and I'm selling, I don't know, like a, I don't, whatever it is, any product, when I sent, when I engaged an influencer, I really want to sell more. And that's why I'm sending this product to this person. So if, if this person gets a million views or 5 million views or a thousand views, I don't care because what I care about is how much this, how much this video sold products for me, because at the end of the day, this is what I care about as a brand. Yep. Now, what influencers thinks about, think about is a completely different thing. They care about their views, their followers, because it will bring them more exposure and more money in deals and all of that. But if we're going to the brand side, which is our listeners, um, we mainly care about how much products we're selling and that these are the metrics that we need to really care about, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so... These people are taking these products and they're promoting them. Um, do you follow up? Do you, I don't know if you have this information, but let's say I promoted a product, whatever, whatever it is. And then this brand, which is like a very big brand or something, they liked what I created and they're like, okay, we need a deal with you. Do you have any information if that's something that really happened? with one of your, you, you know, influencers or it's just, you know, it just happens and you have no idea that, I mean, because it's pa it's beyond stack influence. So there's different levels to the benefit of also the smaller creator side, especially, and you're completely right. Like I yeah. think that people are in the business to make money, right? And so they want yeah. that value off. As far as also the promotional side, and you're completely right, like, a million views might not actually correlate with that many sales. And maybe a thousand views makes more sales than yeah. <laughs> exactly crazy capacity, right? Um, big benefit why I also love nano and micro influencers is you can work with a lot of them. And this is the big yeah. thing the platform is specialized in. We actually automate the collaboration process between the brand and the mm. influencers. We use AI to do that. We have a lot of different technology to do this. Um, because the name of the game is scale. Like, yeah. and the reason being is if you put too many of your eggs in one basket, right? You work with a handful of larger influencers or a handful of just even the smaller ones. Mm -hmm. There could be a risk that some of these promotions don't um, produce as well. And maybe your assumptions of the type of creator that is going to be the best promoter for you doesn't, isn't actually the reality. So yeah. our platform specializes in working with hundreds to thousands of people for brands a month. And if you diversify your okay. risk at that capacity, the odds that a bunch of them are going to produce really, really good and convergent mm -hmm. content um, goes up, right? Mitigates yeah. your risk. You're diversified. Um, also, another thing is beyond the promotion itself, and to, I think you're mentioning this about relationship building, is um, you may not know off the bat even this person has a perfect aesthetic, they're right fit for us, they have a large follower base or they have a lot of videos that have gone viral. You don't know how their audience is going to respond to your specific brand products sure. and until they actually do a promotion for you. And so we like to think of our system as being that first touch point for the brand mm. or its relationship. And we encourage brands to and give them actually tools to re-engage with influencers beyond our campaigns. So mm. they identify, oh, these certain people actually had really high engagement levels. The followers were super, were commenting, were responding. Yeah. And so they may want to turn that person into an ambassador, an affiliate, work with them in this long-term fashion and not just one off. Mm. Um, and we give them the tools to do that. And last but not least is the content piece. So you could have a post that, let's say, does really well, but doesn't convert that that perfectly right that yeah. piece of content um if the influencer will give you rights to which we actually our platform provides full rights license to the content generated you can now turn around and maybe run a facebook or instagram or tiktok ad with that piece of content and that okay. could potentially decrease your ad costs increase your conversions there is scenarios that we've seen of brands like piece of content didn't really perform that well as far as the promotion side 
but they took that piece of content, ran an ad mm-hmm. and some professional content. They literally hired models and like a professional student yeah. and yeah. the content performed literally 5x better than mm. Um, mm. This, because it's again, it's authentic. It's people are yeah. with ads, so they want more real. So, so with your contract, I'm sure there's like a, something that they sign online. Yep. They're allowed to take these pieces of content and post them as ads. Exactly right. Yep. Okay. Because wow. usually what they do, you know, in contracts that they get the paid contract, you need to pay more to be able to, you know, use this yes, video or TikTok or whatever on ads. Yep. This is a big advantage to actually our system is yeah. that you get full yeah. rights and no usage restrictions. So okay. Um, you can use this on social media, your marketing material, your website. Mm-hmm. Like, that also social proof side is really valuable. Like having yeah. a whole bunch of people tagging you that's associated to your profile on it exactly. um, can provide that additional mm-hmm. trust and proof. Same thing of a grid on your website, right? Showing yeah. up while utilizing a product um, becomes very, very valuable for brand building, right? Mm, yeah. It, this is pretty interesting because as a small brand, small, smaller brands, they don't have enough funds to pay all of these people, but then it will cost them a product. However, they will have all this content. And since they can repurpose them freely with the contract that is being signed with Slack, with Stack Influence, they will be able to repurpose in so many different ways and run ads and so the return is much higher than just the cost of that product. And I do think that's pretty interesting, especially for smaller brands. I mean, bigger brands, they can do both. They can afford, you know, to pay the bigger one, the bigger influencers and give products away as much as they want. But for the smaller brands who are mostly our listeners, uh, this can be a very interesting thing to do. Um, do these brands have access to all the analytics? Let's say I'm a brand and I create a campaign with a a set of influencers through Stack Influence and I send these products, get these campaigns, et cetera. Do these influencers have to like send me their results? Like how do we go forward from there? Good question. So the platform does monitor the entire campaign and provide you with social analytics, performance analytics, top influence posts, where people are throughout their process. So everything... For the on the brand side is monitored, even though they don't have to lift a finger mm. to accomplish a campaign. We do um, get their help to build out educational landing pages that educate yeah. who's on the brand, on the products, on their posting guidelines, right? But then once that's all said, it's off to the races. And basically the brand gets to sit back and watch as people sign up for their campaign, as they mm. make content, as they complete that their promotions, everything gets fed in, all the final social posts, all the assets, all the influencers, all the social metrics. So the brand has a really nice and also as a small brand, it's like yeah. kind of valuable. You wear a million hats and exactly. um, especially if you want to deal with the scaling part, right? Is like working yeah. with a lot of people, even a handful of people becomes a full time job. You think yeah. it's easy and somebody do a promotion, um, but it becomes quite time intensive. And so that's what we're here for. Mm-hmm. All right. So they'll get like a full thing happening Absolutely. through your platform without even the need to like, you know, manage ev- everybody. Yeah. Product, right? Our platform yeah, yeah. handles all of that. Mm-hmm. All right. This is pretty cool. And what is your advice to smaller businesses? So businesses who are just starting, it might be even costly for them to send out these products, but Products who are somewhere in the middle, they have proof of concept, they're making good sales, they just want to scale. Uh, they can really, you know, use these nano influencers or micro influencers to like just get their brand out there. Like what is what is your advice to them in terms of influencer marketing and what they can do to really get the the name out there? So like brands just starting out? Like the no, let's say they're selling enough to say, okay, everybody likes my product. Let's scale this. Yeah. Um, so cool thing about micro and nano, it applies to brands, both big to enterprise or small to enterprise, right? Yeah. Just starting out to even the like massive That's fortune 500 companies, like the Unilevers, the Procter and Gamble's of the world, right? Yeah. Um, 
The difference is obviously the scale you can achieve, Mm -hmm. but the bottom line is for brand, mid-tier brands are actually like, they get the biggest value, in my opinion, from a platform like ours and just even working with Nano and Micro in general, because they might not have enough assets. They might not have brand like awareness. Um, Exactly. Like they haven't really gotten the word out. And so this is really where not to say an enterprise brand still doesn't get value or a small brand, right? But yeah. they're kind of like off to the races there. The other mm. cool or important thing to note is if you're giving someone a product, again, this is their compensation. So if you mm-hmm. don't have the right branding set up, right? Like a good yeah. website, like influencers are looking at that and they, they're only yeah. going to represent a brand that actually fits their aesthetic and needs. So you want to kind of get those ducks in a row before you pursue mm-hmm. yeah. Um And if you have zero marketing budget, right? Like you can't even afford to use our software, which is one of the cheapest in the market. But I always recommend brands just start reaching out to people themselves. Like you have an Instagram account, identify some good people who could be a fit for you, reach out to their DMs and try to connect with them. And even a few promotions can be very, very valuable, especially getting some initial assets when you have nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, I have enough money to have a professional photo shoot, right? Yeah. Uh, so all of those things are really key when you're first launching a brand. And yeah. I actually come from an e-commerce space myself. And this is how I got yes. <laughs> it's not influence because uh, this was the most effective way for my partners and I to launch our own D2C e-commerce brands. Yeah. I was going to talk to you about this and then you mentioned it, <laughs> that you had your own e-commerce brand and then you got inspired by everything that was happening to you. And then you started your own company. There's this... Big misconception with e-commerce brands. I'm sure you know a lot of people too, because you were in this world also, who think that, oh my God, I can create a product and send it to a few influencers and then I'm going to be rich, you know? Like, <laughs> And then all these like big influencers or like some of the Kardashians or something like that yeah. are just going to take this product and show it on their social media and they're going to be rich. But this is not happening. Like, Even recently, with all the changes that are happening in, in, you know, the influencer world and on social media, I still have people who are like, I just started this jewelry brand and I sent, I contacted this influencer. She has 200K and this one, she has 500K and she, she did this and, you know, they pay money and then there's, there's nothing that's happening or like nobody answers them. And they're always like stuck with all these things that are happening in this world. Meanwhile, I mean, it's not really that, you know, you cannot, yeah. you can no longer send your product to a Kardashian because they will not even <laughs> open the box, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so um, I guess for smaller D2C brands, it's b- always better to talk to the smaller influencer and it's the smaller influencers nowadays that are converting and you know better, you know, the stats, I'm just saying what's out there but you know better uh even if i have a million follower i may not convert as good as someone who has five thousand. yep is isn't that what you're seeing in this world that's absolutely the case and uh and yeah the the pipe <laughs> can happen right pipe <laughs> yeah you get to yeah. one then all of a sudden you're a millionaire and it's going viral and everything's happening yeah but for the majority it's uh it's very hard to break through and and that's where i always give advice to anyone just starting out is like to grind, right? As any business is and don't expect always overnight success. They say it takes 10 years to be an overnight success. So yeah, might not take that the e-commerce world, but I love this. It takes (laughs) 10 years to be an overnight success. I never heard of this before. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's like incrementally do it and things build, right? The more you produce, the more awareness. People are going to have your product. People are going to be talking about it. Like, Mm be building up a newsletter list like you're going to be creating a better brand and social media presence you're going to have assets to actually run ads even if you don't have the budget to do it right now so it's like all of these things are stepping stones to create a great brand and a super successful brand and then things will compound and it's like compound interest it eventually really breaks through and then Mm. uh, that's how you are successful but uh it's rarely in anything (laughs) Most cases, <laughs> lottery is not one person's going to. Yeah, really it's may, 
it <laughs> may have worked like in the early days, like yeah. very early days Absolutely. of social media. It was working. It used to work. Yeah. But nowadays there's, I mean, it's a business. Social media is not a miracle. It's just a way to communicate with people. Totally. So whether you're an influencer or a brand, even for influencers, it's taking a very long time to get that 100K or 10K even sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it depends on what, what they're doing. So like you said, I really like this. It takes 10, day, 10 years to what? What was yeah, it? Overnight success. To, to be an overnight <laughs> success. I really, really loved it. <laughs> All right, then. Okay, William, we're towards the end of this episode, and I usually like to ask my guests a series of three questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. How would your friends describe what you do for a living? <laughs> um, the Matrix. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, they would describe it as um, I am democratizing the influencer industry. Right. Okay. Bring All right. To the everyday person, as opposed to just the celebrities of the world. Okay, I like this. Uh, question number two: What is the one thing that your product, uh, in this case, uh, your service, did for your client that you didn't expect? That I didn't expect. One thing was a client actually ended up <laughs> positive and negative, but they had a ten-person team who was dealing with everything that we were doing and they ended up yeah. and mostly outsourced um like vas etc yeah, yeah, yeah um our system ended up literally replacing that entire model and wow. uh, and so then they actually could use accomplish more scale than what they were doing with 10 people mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. with our system for a cheaper price and that was pretty surprising of like until i mean we built system to solve our own issues but like until yeah <laughs> someone else has built a similar thing and then it replaces what they built over five years right um that was a pretty nice yeah. eye-opening pretty interesting yeah um question number three is there a book that changed your life that you would recommend to our audience one book that i absolutely love in the marketing space is called biology so it's spelled b-u-y ology okay. um and it's the science of why we buy. And it's very, very amazing to where how psychology comes into marketing yes. and advertising yeah. uh, and how we live in a consumerist world, right? And like mm -hmm. as a consumer, as all of us are, it's also important to understand how things are affecting us, right? Let alone yeah. if we're a actual brand, how to properly market and speak to an audience, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that that book changed how I think about a lot of uh, just because it was science backed marketing, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I should check this out. I've never heard of this one. I usually get the same books over and over again. It's really interesting. Like every single person I ask, there's like two or three books that I always get, but this one is the first if the first time that I that someone mentions this. So I really have to check this out. So William. Tell us a little bit, uh, tell the audience mainly where they can find you and how they can work with you. So you can find us at stackinfluence.com. Feel free to actually, if you'd like to reach out to myself, which is just william at stackinfluence.com is my email. All of social media accounts from TikTok, YouTube, LinkedIn, um, Instagram, it's at stackinfluence, one word. Okay. And uh, yeah, um, that's how you reach us. I'll follow you. I'll follow you on now on TikTok because I didn't have you. All right, then. Thank you, William, for being a guest on the podcast and to all the listeners. I'll be back next week with a new episode.